Hey there, and welcome back to another Elite Code Problems. Today we're going to do problem of the day for uh, May 27th, minimum cost to cut a stick. Okay, so it says, given a wooden stick of length n units, the stick is labeled from 0 to n. For example, a stick of 6 is 0 to 6. Given an integer rate cuts, where cuts i denotes the position where you should perform a cut. You should perform the cuts in order, and you can change the order of the cuts as you wish. The cost of one cut is the length of the stick to be cut. Total sum is the sum of all cuts. When you cut a stick, it'll be split into two smaller sticks. Please refer to the problem below for a more detailed explanation. And so they actually show this problem, right? And so let's actually look at this example over here. Of They're just trying 1, 3, 4, 5. So let's just look at this. And instead of drawing the entire stick, I'm just going to draw the left and the right of the stick. And we're going to draw the cuts. So our first cut is on 1. So we're going to cut 1. And that means that we add whatever the length of the total of the stick we cut. So let's just have some kind of output, like O. And let's just make that 7 here. So we cut this stick. Now every time we cut, we cut into two parts, right? So now we have another stick that's 0 to 1. And then we have another stick that's uh, 1 to 7. Then our second cut is going to be on number 3. So if we cut here, then this is length 6, so we add 6 here. And then we, we cut this stick up into 1 and 3, 3 and 7. And then we still have this 0 to 1. Now our next cut is on 4, so we cut here. So let me just make this bigger. And our last cut's on 5, so let's just make this bigger. Our cut is on 4, so now we break up this stick, right? So we have this stick, this stick. 3 to 4, and we have 4 to 7. And we cut a stick of length 4, so that's going to be 4. And then our last cut is on 5. So that's our very last cut, so then we're done. So if we cut, then we have another 3 that we add. And so our total output doing that is 13 plus 7, which is 20, I believe. So let's see if that's what they have. Yes, yeah, so a 20. And then they're saying you can cut in any which way you want. So you'd have to try this with all kinds of cuts. And so the brute force solution would just try a random cut and then try a random cut and then try a random cut. And I think that's along the lines of, uh, I'm guessing it's going to be along the lines of number of cuts factorial. So it'd be like this because we, we can have four, then we can have three, then we can have two and so on. Also, it's going to be kind of difficult when we make these cuts to know, like, well, what did, what exactly did we cut? How long is each of our sticks? So instead of doing that, let's try to make a better example, and let's just try to figure out. So for one thing, a nice hint you can have is you always want to look at the constraints. So you see that n is 10 to the 6th, but cut's length is only 1 to 100. So if cut's length is only 100, that's basically like constant time. So if we have some kind of thing that's like cut's, n complexity or even n squared complexity, it's okay because this is only 100. This is not, if this was like 10 to the fifth, then we'd have a real problem. But if it's so small, you're get, you're kind of given a hint that it's okay to iterate through these cuts and you don't really need to do anything special. So let's try to figure out what we would actually do. And I will give you a hint, this is a dynamic programming problem, but let's try to figure out the recurrence relation and kind of how we want to do this. So when we're given a stick, how can we represent a stick? Well, like I said, a stick is just the start and the end point of the stick, right? So it's going to start at like 0, 6, 0, 7, whatever. So can't we just, for a stick, can't we just pass into our DP something like left equals the left, and then the right equals the right? So let's say 6. And then we just try all possible cuts and then figure out a recurrence relation. So for example, let's say we cut at 1 here, right? So we cut at 1. Well, now, now what's our recurrence relation? Well, how do we update our value? So we're trying to minimize. So we can just start with some infinity value, right? And we're trying to minimize. And we say, OK, well, we made a cut at 1. So the cost of that is going to be uh, 6, right? Because it's the, the right minus the left. So it's going to be 6. And what's our recurrence relation? Well, every time we cut, we divide whatever we have into two subvalues, right? So this value and this value. And so can't we just get the DP of these and we try it? And remember, we're not cutting in the same place twice. 
So because we're not cutting in the same place twice, we can just break these down and then we can try going through all the cuts again and we're never going to cut some place twice so we can literally just try every single cut. So let's see how that would kind of work and let's also think of the recurrence relation, right? So let's say the recurrence relation would just be we just take this dp, so what's our left? Our left is 0 and then our right is 1 and then we also add dp here of 1 and 6. And so let's say that's the case, right? We just try some random cut now we get into this and we say, okay, well, we tried some random cut. Well, we know the way we cut, we know we're, we're never going to cut again. So we don't have to, we don't have to keep track of where we cut because where we cut, we're not going to be able to cut again. So all we have to do, because like, let's say we cut at one, all we have to do is we can loop through our cuts and we can make sure that we only, t we only try the values in our cuts that are between left and right. Right, because left we could have cut out already, and right we could have cut out already. But anything between we couldn't have cut out already. Otherwise, we would have divided our stick in half, and we would have some we would have put that in. So the valid values to cut are between the left and the right of the stick. And for example, for the right stick, right, we would have one and six. So any any value any valid value to cut would be between one and six now, because we already cut at one. So we can simply do this. We can simply take a new stick, then we can iterate through the cuts again, right? So the cuts are, let's say they are 3, 4, 5 now. Or, sorry, they would be 1, 3, 4, 5, but we would say we would iterate through them and we would try every single cut. So let's say we cut at 3, we divide this up into two sticks, we do DP there, then we cut at 4, divide it up again, DP there, cut at 5, and so on. And let's say we had some cut like eight, we would say, oh, okay, that's out of bounds, so we don't even have to try that. So that's kind of what our recurrence relation looks like here. It's pretty straightforward, actually, once you figure it out, that you know you don't need to keep track. The difficult thing is figuring out you don't need to keep track of which cuts you already used, because the way we're doing this, we're simply dividing our stick up, and then we know the range that we can cut in, and because we can't cut in the same place twice, we can use that. Now let's think of our base case. And let's go back and look at the picture. Well, when does it actually end? So if you take a look, like I said, we're not actually going to be writing which cuts we use. But if we actually look at the bottom of this picture, you can see, OK, let's look at all these cuts. I've cut one. Well, we can't cut at one. None of these sticks can be cut at one, right? None of these sticks can be cut at three. None of these sticks can be cut at four. None of these sticks can be cut at five. So our base case is we're going to get sticks that none of the cuts will work. Once we made all the cuts, since we're not making the same ones again, our basis case is going to be some stick, like let's say we have a 0, 1 stick, and our cuts are, let's say, 1, 3, 5, 6. We can just say, OK, let's try all these cuts between the left and the right, and we have some kind of variable of did we make a cut. So remember, our starting output, let's call our starting output, is going to be infinity, and we're going to try to minimize that. But we can say if we didn't make a cut, if we never had this dp, then we can just return 0, right? Because if none of our cuts work, that means we've that is our base case. We've we've divided our stick so many times that none of our cuts work. And you can see that for for no matter which way you no matter in which order you cut it, once you make a cut, you can never cut none of these sticks is going to be able to be cut in the same spot, right? So once you make a cut, you're always going to be dividing, so you can't make that cut again. And so we don't actually care about we don't even care about the order of the cuts either. It doesn't really matter. So we don't have to sort it or anything because the number of the cuts is so small. You could do a little optimization maybe where you sort the cuts and then you could do something like, let's say you have this stick right here, one through seven, you could say like, okay, once I made a cut, I can have some kind of variable for that, right? Some kind of Boolean. If I have another cut that is outside the bounds, I can just stop there, right? So if you have cut eight, let's say, like you made cut three and you have cut eight, you can't do it. So then anything above that is not going to work either. So you could break there. But honestly, it's not really going to save you time complexity because like I said, this cuts value is so small. So yeah, maybe a little run a little faster on leak code if you want to have it run a little faster. But as far as complexity, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's try to code this up from what I said. So remember, we're going to have, and also so is, we're going to be doing top down dynamic programming. You could code this down um, bottom up, but I'm just going to do top down. I have a lot of problems that I coded top down and bottom up. So you can, this will be good practice for you if you want to try to get the bottom up from the top down. So remember our standard uh, for top down is we're going to have a visited, visited um, hash map, then same thing, right? And then, like I said, we're going to have a left and a right index. And 
so usually our base case goes at the top, but actually now remember that our base case is going to be we're going to try every single cut, and if we had no cuts, then we will return zero. So our base case will actually be checked later on. We can't check that right away. But that's, so the first thing we can check is if the left and right is in our visited hash map. Then we can return. Because you are going to you are going to cut this up. If you try cutting this up in different ways, you are going to have repeated work, right? So if you try to cut, let's say, at 4 and 3, or if you try to cut at 3 and 5, but then you try to cut at 5 and 3, it's going to end up giving you the same sticks and so on. So it'll just give you a different, just give you a different um, result total. But once you're at a stick, it doesn't really matter how you got there. OK. And so we can write that. So if left, right, in visited, pretty straightforward, right? We just do what we normally do. We just return visited left, right. So this problem is actually really easy once you figure out the base case and the recursive case and things. But it is a little tricky to realize that you don't care about the order of the cuts and how it actually looks like. You might think like, oh, I might want to use a cut and then do some kind of backtracking maybe where I, you know, maybe let's say make a cut negative and like go back and like how do I recurse down and that gets kind of complicated. So once you realize you're breaking it up into multiple sticks, then it gets pretty straightforward. Okay. And no matter which way you cut, you're always going to get these sticks at the end. It'll just give you a different output. So that is one. Now remember, we need to have some kind of variable saying, did we make a cut? So we can just say, like, did cut equals false. Now we need a res. And we're going to remember, we're going to initialize that to infinity because we are going to minimize it. Now we just need to do, uh, I don't even think we need the index, but let's just see. And we might. OK, so for this. And remember, we are just checking if the value is in between our left and the right of the cut, right? So like if we're at the stick of 0 to 3 and we get a value 5, we're not going to be cutting there. So we're just checking if the value is valid. So if v, uh, so left, remember, is green v less than right. It has to be between. It can't be on the border, because otherwise we already made that cut. So if we have a stick of 0 to 3, we can't cut a 3 we already did. So it has to be these. Then this is our, um, this is, we can make a cut here. So we have to make this value equals true for later. And now we just have to minimize the res. So min res. And then what's our output going to be? So it's going to be, remember, once we cut a stick, it's going to be the right minus the left. We're going to take that value and add it to, to the two dps, right, from this picture. So we have the value and then the two, the two substicks. So that's just going to be right minus left. And then it's going to be, we add the two substicks, right? So dp. So remember, the left substick is going to go from left to uh, v. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we actually need the index, I believe. Yeah, we so we don't actually need this enumerator. So we can just say for cut and cuts. It's a, yeah, that'll work. And then this is just cut. And then this is cut. OK, so that's our left substick. And our right substick is going to go from the cut to the right. And that makes sense, right? Like, let's say we cut it. Um, let me redraw this real quick. So let's say we have a stick from 0 to 6. We cut at 3. Our two substicks are going to be right left to cut. So this is left, this is right. And then cut to right. And we're going to call dp on both of those. And our total value for this current stick is going to be 6 minus 0. So that's going to be right, uh, sorry, cut right. Yeah, that looks good. Now remember what we do have to do after we finish these cuts is we have to say if not did cut. So this is if we didn't find a cut, then our output is 0. And then we are going to just do the normal thing here, so standard. Uh, Memorization from here. So left, right equals res, return res. And now we simply have to call dp on the, these left and right uh, of the. And, oh, so by the way, sorry, this left and right actually needs to be 0 and n, right? That's what they're initialized at. So if you have a stick between 0 and n, it's going to be this. So 7, 0 to 7, so on. I think that's it. OK, let's see. OK, cool. 
So like I said, you can make it a little bit more efficient if you do sort the cuts, but time and complexity, it's not going to matter. Okay, so let's think of the time and space complexity here. So remember, we are iterating through every single cut, so that's length cuts, but this is going to round down to nothing. And now what are our states? So our left can be anywhere from the length of this n, so it's n times n, and that right can be anywhere from the length of the n roughly. So it's going to be 100 n squared, this 100 is going to cancel out, and that's just going to be n squared. That's going to be the time for every, and that's what every single state we can go to. And space, same thing. Because the, yeah, so space is just going to be this visited, which is left and right, can only be 0 to n. So hopefully that makes sense from this problem. Like I said, it is a hard problem, but to the way to do these DPs is just recognize it's a DP and come up. Honestly, the, the tricky thing about most of these hard problems is coming up with the uh, base case and the recursive, like what this recursive thing needs to be, is kind of tricky. So, but the main thing you want to look at when to 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 get a to try to figure out what kind of thing you're doing is these constraints. I think a lot of people don't look at these constraints, and if you do look at them, you can definitely cancel out a lot of things, right? Because if these cuts were 10 to the sixth, for example, then this solution wouldn't work because that would be n cubed which usually doesn't pass on leak code. So once you learn to recognize these patterns, that'll help you out a lot. Okay, so thanks for watching, and if you like this video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.